people honestly don't care what you look like. They care more about what you can do for them. And if the best way to reach more people, to tell them how you can help them is by embracing video to have more meaningful sales conversations, why the heck would you not do it? This is Outside Sales Talk, the best podcast for outside salespeople. I'm your host, Steve Benson, and we're here to chat with the world's top sales experts so that you can get their best sales tactics to level up your game. Welcome back to Outside Sales Talk. Today, I've got Colin Mitchell with us, and we're going to talk about accelerating your sales process with video. Exciting and uh, super highly relevant topic. Welcome to the show, Colin. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here. And uh, I had a ton of fun when you were on my show, so I know this is going to be good. Absolutely. So uh, Colin's a Forex founder of businesses. He's a sales leader and he's the host of The Sales Hustle. And Colin is uh, passionate about sales, entrepreneurship and podcasting. So let's get started. Uh, your, your story is super inspiring, Colin. Um, first, we, you know, we all know that video has become more and more prominent during COVID. Could you walk us through the role that video plays in each stage of the sales process? Yeah. So um, I'm a big fan of video, have been for a long time. And I think that there's a lot of people that are jumping on and just still trying to figure out video and what to do, what platforms to use, where to use it in the sales process. Um, I'm a big fan of using video at all stages of the sales process. Now, there's a lot of people that say, don't send video on like the first outreach, right? Like maybe you're trying to set a meeting. Maybe you're just trying to catch their attention. I don't a hundred percent agree with that. Um, I've tested it a little bit and we've done video in, in cold outreach and, and things like that when trying to, you know, catch somebody's attention, get them to raise their hand, um, and been fairly successful with it. Uh, there's a lot of people that have kind of more of the, the school of thought of like on the second or third touch, or maybe after a positive reply, then incorporate video. And this could be on, you know, LinkedIn, this could be on email. Um, I, I like vid- using video wherever you can. Um, I'm also a big fan of, of something that we started to test recently in some of our, you know, cold outreach and things like that is, is just recording a short like GIF, um, and so it's not actually a full video, but it's like, it's an animated image, right? Um, and so a lot of times when you do any sort of outreach, you're typically sending, you know, maybe a short message, maybe a very personalized message of, you know, what problems you solve, seeing if something resonates. Uh, and then you're typically following up from there, maybe three or four follow-ups, you know, hey, any thoughts on this, something like that, you know, something short, just kind of getting it, bringing it back to the top of their inbox. Um, so we've been testing a, recently where we do a, a GIF in that second or third touch, uh, and this is in cold outreach, um, where we're just pointing up, just going like this. For those that are watching this, we're just pointing up in the video, and it's bringing their attention to that first email that we may have sent. We've seen a lot of success with that. Um, and then there's maybe another follow-up if that doesn't catch their attention, uh, sort of like the breakup email, um, you know, or last chance, you know, sort of email, um, where we do the same version of that, but with a sad face, and that kind of looks like this. And uh, we've seen a lot of success with that. Uh, So that's that top of funnel activity. So we're using video in the very beginning of the relationship and it stands out and it catches people's attention. Uh, And sometimes they reply only because of us standing out and and doing it in that way. Um, So yeah, like top of funnel activity, use video. If you're, you, let's shift, you know, to a different channel. Say you're using LinkedIn to try to book your meetings or, uh, you know, get, prospects into a conversation, great opportunity to use video. If you're not totally comfortable with video, at least start using like voice DMs. Most people don't even know that voice DMs exist. Um, You you, you typically have to do the from your mobile device, right? Where you're sending them like a voice message. Those stand out. And then just to really elevate that is to get on a video. And I think- When you're talking about on on LinkedIn then? Yeah. So on LinkedIn, you can can do a voice DM. That's a, a good place to start. If maybe you're still trying to figure out video, you're not totally comfortable getting on camera. Um, but video, using video in your sales process is one of those things that you just got to get started and you got to get over the fact that you are going to suck at it first. You're going to make mistakes. It's not going to be perfect. It might be messy and, and that's okay, but you just got to start doing it and you'll get more comfortable 
and your videos will get better. And they don't need to be these like super well polished videos. You know, we're not talking about high quality production, you know, using, you know, uh, some sort of fancy software. We're talking just selfie videos and there's tons of platforms that you can use. You can use your cell phone for this. Um, it's just putting a face to the name. It's standing out in a different way. You know, go into the video and have some proper etiquette, like some simple things is, you know, it's, it's kind of a weird thing, but even like right now when we're recording um, this podcast on Zoom, you get on a lot of Zoom meetings and, and people are so used to trying to look at the person, but that looks a little weird. I actually got to look at the camera so mm -hmm. that it feels like I'm actually looking at you. Uh, so same thing when you're recording a video, make sure you have that good eye contact. Um, another little hack that I learned is most people typically like wave uh, when they when they first start their video, like, you know, uh, they'll say, hey, Bob, and then they'll go into whatever they want to say. Uh, well, a little trick, a lot of times those videos have a big play button right in the center of your face. So it's not as inviting. And, you know, so be conscious of when you're starting that video to have a big smile and kind of, you know, get yourself to the side of the frame a little bit so you don't have a big play button right in the center of your face. Those are some small things. And then from there, you know, if you're going to type an email that's more than a couple of sentences, go ahead and type that out. You know, whether it's after your discovery and you're recapping that conversation, whether it's to talk next steps in closing and getting approval, uh, whether it's to confirm a, a meeting that you set where you're actually going to, you know, meet hopefully in person maybe soon, right? Um, you know, whatever that is, if, if it's going to type a message in an in, in, in email or whatever the case is, and if it's going to be more than a couple sentences, I say make it a video. Go ahead and type that message out. Use that as your script to then record your video and send that instead. Yeah, I've definitely found, I mean, and I, I get a lot of cold emails, just, you know, people selling different things, different services. And, uh, and I, and I don't get that many personalized videos, but when I do, I, I do tend to, I, I tend to watch them because a, a, I can't skim it the way I can skim, you know, an email and, you know, tell what's going on. But also I'm just kind of, if someone took the time to make, I feel like if someone took the time to make a video, it wasn't like mass done. And so if it is like a personalized video, I'm, I'm, I'm likely to watch it. I'm like, well, if it's, if it's worth their time to go through all this trouble, then there's, there, there's probably a reason they're reaching out to me. Unless maybe it's targeted enough. I should check it out. Yeah. And, you know, keep them short, you know, like maybe 90 seconds, two minutes max, um, really drive your point in the beginning. Cause they may not watch the whole thing. Um, and make it inviting in the end. So maybe say, hey, I just made this 70 second video for you. Um, wanted to talk about how we're helping companies do A, B, and C. Um, we're, you know, would love to, if you, if you're, are you opposed to learning more about how we're doing this? Like just really, you know, driving that, you know, proposition um, early on in the video and, and keeping it nice and short. Definitely go into the video prepared. Like don't just hit record and then figure out what you're going to say. Um, that might work for some people, but it's good if you at least have like some bullet points um, or if you've written yourself a bit of a script. And if you have a script that's really shown to work well, you know, save that and just repurpose it. You know, you don't have to hyper personalize everything that you should do. You should have kind of a basic, you know, point that you're trying to make or some basic bullet points that you're using in every video. But maybe you might have something a little bit personalized, like, Hey, I, you know, came across your profile on LinkedIn and really loved your post about X, Y, and Z, you know, here's some of my thoughts on that. And, and then go into kind of your, you know, what you would say. So, um, also there's a trick, like you can go not personalized, but make it feel personalized. Um, and you can send those a little bit more at scale in, in cold outreach, um, like in the second or third touch. And, and there's things that you can do where it feels like I'm, I'm speaking to you, especially if you really know your prospects and you really know their role, you really know the job that they do. You really know the problems that they have on a daily basis. Then you can create a video that's kind of talking more to those, but not like actually calling their name out. Very good. Yeah. I, uh, I think I think it'd be very powerful. And another thing I've seen people do that works is uh, just reach out to their entire network on LinkedIn with a video. I've gotten a few of those where they just kind of give a brief update, you know, kind of almost like a Christmas card, but a video Christmas card. <laughs> um, but I, I, although it didn't come at Christmas, but it was just kind of like, oh, I just want to reach out, touch base, and here's 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 what I do. You know, it's been a while since we chatted. Just wanted to let you know, you know, where where things are at here. And I'm sure that, and I, and I imagine that person just sent it out to. 5,000 people, but, um, you know, your, your friends are going to be annoyed at you, but, uh, 
you know, there's probably a lot of people who you haven't worked with in the past or haven't talked with for a long time who it would be valuable to hear from and kind of just give that overview really quick. Yeah, that works if you have like a really engaged network, right? If, if, if you have people that are just, you know, if you have a really high quality network that's engaging with your content that you're, you know, kind of doing social media, right. And, and then you can send something like that where, you know, you have a lot of fans or supporters that are just kind of behind whatever it is that you're doing. Um, that's a good way to do it. It's like, you know, uh, a better version than like sending out a new, a newsletter, right. Where like, unless you are really good at writing and, and have something super entertaining, people are kind of tired of newsletters in, in most cases. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. What do you think, uh, speaking of newsletters, what, what do you think about the shifting to using videos in the sales process from other forms of communication? Where, where is it best leveraged? Where does it not work as well? Where should, what should we use in conjunction with other things? Is there anything we should just throw in the trash? I don't think that video is really replacing anything. I mean, like to send a video, like you still got to send an email to send the video, right? So it's not really replacing email, but it's definitely replacing, you know, writing a, a longer form email where people are typically going to skim it. Um, you know, everybody's super busy, right? So if you see an email that's more than like four sentences, they're going to, they're going to skim it or not really read it all. So it's a really good way to just get your point across, especially if you're working in any sort of like enterprise sales where there's, you know, you're relying on your champion to hopefully relay your message to maybe, you know, the five or six people that are involved in the buying process. You know, video is a great way to recap that conversation, make sure that everybody involved um, is going to hear from your mouth, you know, exactly what you want them to hear rather than, you know, you kind of hoping your champion is going to relay the message the way you'd like it to be uh, relayed. Um, so, you know, video, I think, I don't, I don't think it's replacing anything. I think it just really uh, improves the process. It makes it more personable. I mean, even just like, let's t take aside like sending people a video, but like even just video conferencing, right? This where a lot of people are now, you know, conducting their discovery calls, their networking calls, their demo calls, their sales calls, everything on some sort of video conferencing platform. Um, and, you know, pre pre pandemic, there was a lot of people that would be even reluctant to just turn on their camera. And you see a lot of people have, most people have, have moved away from that. Most people are at least more willing to turn their camera on. And I think I, I read a, I read a fact probably, I don't remember where I, I read it, but it was probably about, I would say maybe three years ago. And, um, I was definitely one that, you know, maybe turn the camera on if they turn the camera on, turn the camera on, or sort of kind of in that, that camp of people. Um, but I read a fact that like salespeople who turn their video camera on, you know, they close 40% more deals than those that don't, that, that, that don't turn the camera on. Uh, roughly it was like 42%, something like that. And so from that day on, like I always had my camera on, I really embraced video, um, I encourage everybody that I work with to use video. Um, and, and so people that, you know, kind of, I work with our go-to is like, if it's more than a couple of sentences, type the email, that's your script, record a video, send it off. Great advice. And what about the maintenance of relationships? How do you, how, how can salespeople leverage video to maintain and grow relationships that they already have? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a great way to, uh, get in front of your, your, your customers, like current customers, right. Without taking up a ton of their time and they'll appreciate it. Right. So maybe you have a new feature that's come out and, you know, you have a, a client that is just busy. They're a great client, but typically, you know, to, to get them on a call is, is maybe a little bit more difficult or whatever the case is, but Hey, you know, I know that you were requesting this particular feature or, Hey, I thought that this is a feature you might be interested in. Just do like a really, you know, two, three minute video kind of highlighting that, showing them how they could use it, talking to them about some of the benefits and shoot it off. So it works great with account management and, and maintaining relationships as, to, as well, because um, they're getting a little bit, they're getting to see you, um, which is, which is valuable. And uh, it, you're showing that you're thinking about them. 
uh, and you're kind of going out of your way to just constantly add value to that relationship. And, and where does this go wrong? What are some of the biggest mistakes you see salespeople make when it comes to video? <laughs> so, I mean, definitely make sure that you have you know, a somewhat presentable background, <laughs> like, you know, don't be in your bedroom with like your dirty laundry on the bed or whatever the case is, right? Um, you know, you could embrace the virtual background, which which is always an option. Um, you know, uh, you, you can, you know, do a video and then sort of like not make eye contact and and, 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 and kind of maybe fidget a little bit or act a little bit nervous, um, which you might do when you first start doing video, right? So you really gotta just kind of, before you get on camera, like take a deep breath, like get your mindset right, be prepared, you know, use some of those tactics where you're smiling, kind of off-centering yourself into the screen and then be really clear. And then the biggest thing is like, watch the video, watch the video before you send it, which, is the same as like read your email before you send it, you know? So watch your video before you send it off just to make sure like, oh, you know, I, I kind of look a little nervous because the video could, I mean, people are going to see your video and they're going to be reading, they're going to be listening to what you're saying. Uh, they're also going to see your body language. So, you know, maybe if you're saying something you're a little uncomfortable with or you're unsure of and you're not presenting yourself in a confident way, you know, that could definitely hurt you more than it helps you for sure. Absolutely. And what, what about Zoom fatigue? I, you hear about so much. A lot of people are they're experiencing Zoom fatigue. And how, how should salespeople keep prospects and clients interested and engaged throughout video calls, given that, you know, we're, we're spending so much time lately on these things. And a lot of people are just sick to death of them. Yeah. So, you know, I, I kind of, there's a lot of people talking about Zoom fatigue. And I'm not saying it's not a real thing, right? But it's like, it's I kind of I kind of call BS on it. Like, as a sales professional, hopping on Zoom and having conversations with your prospects and customers is your job. So get over it and figure out a way to maybe make it a little bit more fun, a little bit more engaging, um, and 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 embrace it, right? So change your mindset, and and so. But then on the flip side there's your prospects, right? So maybe they're experiencing Zoom fatigue. Maybe they're reluctant to get on a, another Zoom call, right? So embrace the phone as well. Like every call doesn't have to be a video call. Uh, we actually made some shifts um, where we used to do our discovery calls on video. And then we would do our demos again on, you know, on video conferencing. Uh, so we actually, you know, our, our discovery calls are pretty short, you know, they're 15, 20 minutes. Um, and so that's when somebody's raised their hand or expressed some level of interest in what we do. And we hop on a short, you know, call just to kind of see if it's a good fit and get to learn a little bit more about them and their needs and what sort of problems they might be having. Um, and you know, some discoveries are, are longer, maybe 30 minutes, whatever the case is, or I don't know if you go super deep, maybe it's an hour, but that call doesn't have to be on video. You could do it on the phone. So if you have like these shorter calls, um, you can do some of those. So what we did is, is um, we actually shifted because we had a, a, a very significant no-show rate uh, on these discovery calls uh, that were supposed to be a video conferencing call. And even sometimes they'd show up late. Uh, we'd have to call them to get them on the video conferencing. And so we decided, let's just, let's just get rid of it. The discovery calls will just be on the phone. We will call them at the time agreed. And that lifted our show rate by about 40%, um, which, was, which was a pretty big gain for us because, uh, you know, people didn't want to hop on a, 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 another video call. And so by switching that to just a regular phone call, we were able to have a lot, have a lot more conversations in the initial, you know, so, uh, sales stage. And um, what suggest suggestions would you have for someone who maybe they're more more traditional, maybe they're not super comfortable using video calls as their as their main way of selling right now, or they're not. This just isn't something that they've done before. What would you have? What would you say to them? That how could they become more comfortable? How could they, if they listen to you right now and they're like, "Wow, that that sounds actually like it would help me a lot," but I 
I'm just not ready for that. Or I'm not comfortable with that. Well, what advice would you give them? Uh, to get over yourself and just get started. <laughs> like, Jump in the deep I'm, end. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the bottom line is like, maybe people are self-conscious of like how they look or how they sound or whatever the case is, you know, this kind of video reluctance. Um, and it's just get over yourself. Like people honestly don't care what you look like. They care more about what you can do for them. And if the best way to reach more people, to tell them how you can help them is by embracing video to have more meaningful sales conversations, why the heck would you not do it? I love it. Um, in the deep end of the pool with you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, let's, let's you either do... swim or drown. I don't know. We'll figure it out. <laughs> That's what they tell me. Um, uh, so next section is sales in 60 seconds. So quick questions, quick answers. Um, what's your go-to favorite video strategy? Uh, my go-to favorite is like post discovery, post demo, type it out as an email, use it as the script, use Loom or Vidyard and send that off with just a, you know, hey, Bob, made this quick, you know, 90 second video for you. And that's it. And then in those tools, the great thing about those tools as well is you can typically create like a call to action button. So if the next step is to view your proposal or the next step is to book the next meeting, which you know could be the case, but hopefully you did that on the last call, maybe you didn't, um, then you can create a call to action button on these platforms. They're just Chrome browsers. They're super easy to use. Um, and that's my favorite place to use video. Awesome. And what's the the biggest benefit to using video for salespeople? I mean, the biggest benefit is you're getting, you know, it, it's helping you build more trust and rapport. You're, you know, virtually getting more FaceTime with your prospect. Um, and, and it's just, you know, people, you also, your message is going to be received better um, because on video, just like, you know, on, even on the phone, you know, they're going to see you. They can see your body language. They can see your tone. They can see your confidence. So it's just a much more powerful way of relaying your message. Things can kind of get lost in translation in, in email or taken the wrong way or, you know, so th there's so many benefits of, of sending your message in a video versus like typing it out in an email. And uh, what's your number one tip? that you would give to a salesperson who's just getting into leveraging video? The number one tip is, um, is to use it at all stages of the sales process. Like there's no one place that it works better than others. Um, especially if you set the relationship in, in from the very beginning, from even when you're prospecting all the way through closing a deal, if you're using it at all stages of the sales process, you're going to stand out in comparison to maybe, you know, some other options that they're looking at. And uh, besides video conferencing, what other ways can salespeople integrate video in their sales process? You mentioned Loom, you mentioned Vidyard. Maybe you could tell us what those are and, and any yeah. other tools that you think are, are really appropriate for salespeople. Yeah, there's a ton of them popping up all the time. A newer one is Hippo Video. Um, Hippo Video allows you to um, kind of create like a really fancy page that might have some other things. So that way, when you send your video, you can have some case studies, uh, maybe some informational stuff about your product or your service. Uh, so Hippo Video is pretty cool in that regard. Um, Loom and Vidyard are really nice. They have uh, mobile apps uh, on the on your phone, as well as they're a Chrome browser extension. So you can do video. And also something that's really cool is you can also, you know, kind of create a video of you speaking also while you're maybe sharing something on your screen. So if you have a very comprehensive proposal, you can kind of walk them through that, um, talk about next steps. If you have a new feature that you want to highlight, or you want to kind of give them like a little bit of a sneak peek of a demo, um, you can use those tools to do that. Um, there's another product I'm a fan of called SalesReach, salesreach.io. Um, you actually create really fancy pages where you can have all kinds of stuff. And basically you can record a video, send somebody all your case studies, all your, your, your proposal, you know, link to book a meeting all on just one link um, that's evergreen and they can share it with their team. So, so those are all great tools and you can use them in different uh, use cases there. Awesome. 
And uh, what would you say the biggest benefit is um, if you com were to compare video and a regular phone call? What is the what is the standout thing to you between those two platforms? So I think that's kind of the the biggest competitor here that we're trying to, that we're trying to get people to replace with this. Yeah, I mean, they get to see your big smiley face, you know, cheese, you know, they get to see you, who you are, uh, you know, maybe you have some things in your background that, you know, kind of tell them a little bit of who you are, your personality, um, you know, so it's just ways of building more rapport and trust and familiarity, um, especially if, you know, people aren't comfortable with face-to-face -face yet, especially, you know, Maybe you do your sales calls on video um, and you can do a lot more of them, right? Um, so there's a, lot of, there's a lot of benefits, but the main thing is, is building trust and rapport. They get to see your face. They get to see your environment. Um, I mean, sometimes people have even done videos where they're like holding a kid because, I mean, life's crazy right now. <laughs> like, you know, there's just, there's a lot of things that you can kind of use to your benefit uh, if you embrace video in all, you know, parts of your sales process. Absolutely. And as an actionable takeaway, what's the first thing that a field salesperson listening today should do as their very first step to start leveraging video in their sales process? Yeah, I would say the number one thing right now, let's say everybody has these people. Um, I don't care how good new tenured you are in sales. Everybody's got probably at least maybe a few people, hopefully not too many that are just totally ghosting you right now. <laughs> Whoever those people are, you know who they are, the deals that have stalled, the prospect that you thought that was interested that, you know, went dark. Whoever those people are, make a list of them, send all of them a video, see what happens. And, and what platform would you use to do that? Yeah. I mean, depends. So you can, you can just keep it really super basic and just do it on your phone with nothing. Um, you can also loom and Vidyard have free versions of their software. So those are two great products to start with. And then if you want to go to their more premium model, it's, it's not very expensive at all. All right. Well, this has been fantastic, Colin. I'm going to try to summarize what, what, uh, the things you've taught us today. First, Colin encourages us to use video whenever we can. So try adding gifts to emails, for example. Try Colin gave the example of, of a GIF pointing up to the first email you sent in, in an email chain. Video puts a face to the name and helps you stand out amongst a, a sea of information that's out there today. So you know if, uh, if an email is gonna be longer, instead try using a video and try to keep the video short, maybe 90 seconds to two, min two minutes max, but drive your, home point, drive your point home with a video instead of with that email and, and try a few best practices, try making, uh, making your point early in the video. Um, and it, when, when you're thinking about uh, sales calls in general, if you have the opportunity, you know, if you're on Zoom, don't just leave your video off, Cons consider turning your camera on even if the other person isn't, you can give the you can you can have yours on, and it'll it'll help you close more deals. Colin said that forty percent more more deals or or, or sales reps using video were, were closing forty percent more deals than than reps that weren't. So it's kind of a no brainer. Mm -hmm. um, video also works great for maintaining customer relationships. It, it helps you your customers stay connected with you and allows you to keep providing value. It's one more avenue that people enjoy. You know, people enjoy watching videos. Um, another tip, uh, be mindful of your background when you're recording the video. And in uh, that way, um, you know, make sure you don't have any dirty laundry or anything. And, and you want to make sure that you're prepared, right? So be, be prepared, uh, you know, maybe write out what you're going to say. Watch the video before you send it and pay attention to your body language. Uh, speaking of zoom, zoom fatigue, if you, if you're experiencing zoom fatigue or you're concerned, your, your customers are, think about how you can change your mindset. Think about how you can make video more fun. Um, and, and you can always switch to, to phone calls for, for certain types of calls too, you know, bounce around, use both that way. Nothing gets boring. Uh, I guess bottom line, don't be too afraid of video. 
people don't care about what you look like. People care about how you can help them. So um, this is a new medium and it's kind of been democratized in the last couple of years. And it's something that a lot of salespeople aren't taking advantage of. So, so get after it. This has been fantastic, Colin. Where can our, our, our listeners read more about your work? How do they reach out to you? What, what, if they wanted to go deeper with you, what are the next steps? Yeah, man, Steve, you're a great listener. I can't remember. I can't believe you remembered all of those things we discussed. I, I actually, <laughs> I, I have CRS syndrome, which is can't remember shit, but I'm, I'm good at writing things down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, let's keep it really simple. The best place to find me is on my podcast, which is Sales Hustle. Uh, Steve, you were on, on as a guest. We have, we drop three episodes a week. Um, we're in Sales Hustle. We're on all the podcast platforms you could possibly think of. So wherever you enjoy listening to podcasts, check us out. Um, and yeah, other than that, LinkedIn's a great place as well. Well, this has been a great episode of the Outside Sales Talk. If you work in field sales, you'll love Badger Maps. The number one route planner helps you sell 20% more and drive 20% less. And we have a free trial at badgermapping.com. If you can think of any other sales reps who would benefit from learning about video that Colin, you know, the video skills Colin's taught us about today, definitely forward this this, uh, episode on to them so that they can learn it too. Take care until next time, everybody. And Colin, thanks a ton for being on the show today. Yeah, thanks for having me. 